Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you my DIY light modifiers, what's special about them and how I make them. And if you look at this you can already tell it's a bit of a special modifier, it does not look like your generic light diffuser. And the reason why it looks so crooked right now is that I was using it with a bit of a side light modification and I'll take a photo quickly just to demonstrate it. And there we go. And as you can see it really works nicely as a side light. And that is one of the many reasons why I like this modifier so much. Because it consists from two components. And that means it is very flexible and adjustable. You can have it coming straight from above. You can use it with longer lenses. You can increase your working distance. If you were to use extension tubes you could increase the working distance even more if you wanted to. It holds on and tucks in nicely right on your lens. And it is very stable, you can move it off to the side and I just found it really really useful. The next thing that's special about it, and this makes all the difference, is the diffusion material that I use. And this is not just any kind of plain white diffusion layer, it actually is a tablecloth that I found at JISC. And um, there, there are many um, places where you can find outdoor tablecloths for barbecues and stuff. And most of them have either interesting textures or interesting patterns which would make for cool shadows. But especially if you find something with a three-dimensional texture like this, you see this is all riffled, but every panel is riffled in a different orientation, so it sends off light at different intensities into different directions. And if you happen to catch a reflection of this, it quite imitates an overcast sky. Because it has a texture to the highlights, let's say if you were to photograph a ladybug, and it's inevitable that you get a reflection of your light source. And in this case, there really is a texture to it, and it looks like clouds in the sky, and that way you don't give away as easily that you're using an artificial light source and I find the images just a little bit more pleasing. Now, I told you we're going to make one of these today, so let's talk about the materials we'll need. First of all, we'll need a couple cans of Pringles or some sort of um, no-name chips, whatever works. Um, we'll need a can opener to take out the bottoms and ideally a pair of pliers so you can bend it into shape. And then you get a nice stable flash mount that slides right on and it's not going to come apart as if you were to use the paper end of that chips tube. So this is another good idea. Um, besides the Pringles cans obviously we need a sort of screen. Um, so something that spreads the light and diffuses it. Last time I used a round plastic dish for this job but I don't want two identical modifiers so this time I'm using a rectangular one. Obviously we need something um, to cover this, some sort of reflective foil. Last time I started with the chips motif and I used an inside out um, chips bag that I washed off and it really works nicely. This time I'm using a rescue blanket which also by the way, macro hack, is an awesome background. It has a golden and a silver side and if you crumble it up and stick it somewhere in the background and direct the light at it, beautiful bokeh is all I say. Um, so we've got that covered, next we need something to mount the Pringles tube onto our screen. So this is what I'm thinking, with, a, <laughs> with an aluminum dish like this I think I can just cut a star into it and then slide it onto that tube, cut a hole into the screen, have it coming in from the other side and then connect it just with duct tape and glue. And these are the only left components that I didn't mention because something has to hold it together. So let's dive into it. So we're going to start by removing the bottom of the Pringles can with the can opener. Next, we're going to cut out the corner in order to create an elbow piece. But before we do this, let's quickly bend this into shape with the pliers so that it fits nicely onto our flash. And there we go. That should do the job. Let's have a try. Fits perfectly. That's exactly what we want. Now we're going to measure roughly 3 inches from here to here and we'll mark the top of this. Um, 1, 2, 3. This should be about right. Now that is going to be our first cut from around here and here all the way around. All we have to do now is to remove this section here, create a apple slice kind of cut to actually make this fit around this part. If you're not sure about your cuts, always cut a little bit less because it's always easier to cut more than to add back on. Next, we just need to glue these two pieces together with a little bit of packaging tape and that's about it for this piece. 
And this doesn't have to be perfect by any means. The only purpose this has is to hold it in shape and to prevent it from coming apart. Next we need to cut a hole into this plastic dish in order to attach it to this little aluminum dish. So I'm done with the cutting out and I already stuck the aluminum dish into that plastic container. And what I did as you can see is that I bent it from the inside around the edge of the plastic dish that I cut out. And now I'm going to bend it up just a little bit, just enough to fit in some hot glue. So we've got our plastic box prepared, we've got a Pringles can without no bottom. Next you're just going to cut this open and cut this off on an angle in order to attach it on an angle to this dish that is going to be our diffusion screen and we want to be able to rotate the diffusion screen while it's on an angle at least that's the goal of my light modifier right here so I have to attach it on an angle. Cutting this piece off really was a game changer because now we're not dealing with a tube anymore but with a flexible joint and we can just slide this piece right in and then really flexibly direct it in all angles and directions that we want to. And even though it looks a little bit flimsy right now, once it's all stabilized with glue and duct tape it's going to work perfectly well. And I'm just going to finish this up with glue and duct tape and in the next step we'll cover this with the reflective rescue blanket. So unfortunately with all the foil wrapped around the tube does not fit in anymore but there's a simple solution to this. I just cut out a little strip right here and then I used a thumb tack like this to nail it in and with a pair of pliers you can just flatten it down and we've got a pretty solid connection. Now we've got the whole screen covered in two layers of reflective foil. All we have to do now is to put on this diffusion layer and we're pretty much good to go with this part. Alright, our light modifier is finished and ready to go and I really love the result. I tried it out already and the test images look great. I'll share them with you in the end of this video but before we get there, there's a couple more things I want to mention. Now first of all, even though this is very flexible and very... Um, yeah, very flexible, it allows a lot of different lighting setups. Still there is one thing that I would do differently if I were to do this again, to increase the flexibility even more, and that is by just moving this center hole off to the side, and then you could have this, um, have this whole area more off to one side and you could extend it out even more if you had a longer working distance or if you want more light in the background. Nevertheless, I'm really happy with this outcome and the images look great. Now the other thing that I wanted to mention is that you can easily put in another diffusion layer for even softer light if it's still too harsh for your liking and I just used the um, the bottom of a plastic cup, I cut it off and then I put some uh, white fabric over it, some very thin white fabric. I attached it with four dots of glue and then it slides right into here and it just fits perfectly. It's easy to take out and put back in. Now that's about it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get inspired to make your own modifier. If you do, let me know how it works out. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!